joining us every day here on our Market Day Report. Great partners up at St. John's, Michigan. Let's get started here and get you caught up in the grain trade here. Uh, looking at the corn futures uh, higher. I'm going to talk to our good friend Todd Horwitz in a minute. Uh, show you uh, corn futures higher by seven, seven and a half. And the soybean trade after a 25, 30 cent advance yesterday, we are another 19 to 20 cents higher today. Let's go to the man with all the answers in here. Todd Horwitz joining us live from the floor at the CME Group in Chicago. Todd, I want to have to say thanks. I opened up a gift here from you. <laughs> uh, I mentioned a week or so ago what a great tie you have, a set of ties. Lo and behold, you sent one to me. I'm wearing it today. So I've got, you know what, and comments all over the office today about that. Where'd you get that tie? Uh, there you go, man. I and, and I feel smarter already. <laughs> AgriLiquid gave it to you. There you there go. There you go. All so, right. All right. Make some sense of this grain trade back and forth. Weather says it should be uh, lower here with the rain. And we're not. Uh, well, you know, Mark, I, I think you're really just really seeing more of a dead cat bounce in here, Mark. You know, you, you've seen, you know, last week we had some obviously some very heavy pressure in corn coming down almost 10 percent. And and now you expect to see in, in the equity market to call it a dead cat bounce. It's just really a, a, a spot where people are either going to cover some shorts or they're going to come in and try to test some new money. I think that, that, that this is just that. I think this is a dead cat bounce. I, I think we've seen over the morning that it really doesn't have all that much oomph behind it that's going to really push them a lot higher. Not, not that it won't, but I would expect still lower prices. I mean, my first objective on corn was 385, which you've hit, but I think we'll come back a little bit further again and come down and test that level one more time. And I think beans, again, they weren't down quite as bad as, as corn last week. They were down about 6%, but now they've come back and we're getting a little bit of rally here. But I think, again, they're going to come back, you know, 1080, 1060, maybe even lower. Again, I think the season's going to be great. I love the space. I, I, I want to be in it, and I will be in it, but from right now, my perspective is that we're going to see some lower prices that we've over-anticipated and tie into the, the overall economic problems throughout the globe, and I think that's going to lead to a little bit of pressure here coming soon to a theater near you, and we, you know, wheat's at the bottom end. I mean, I'd be a buyer of wheat if I was trading it right now. Very good. Yeah, we are higher in wheat, by the way, two and three quarters in July. That'll be in delivery here starting on a Thursday or first notice day. So you're saying uh, you use the firm uh, phrase a uh, dead cat bounce. That's pretty good bounce in beans. You're talking about 30 cents yesterday, 20 cents today at 50 cents in two days. Seems like a pretty good bounce. Uh, well, yeah, but we're still, you know, again, we're still not up to the highs. You know, there's a lot of things going on here, and, and typically that's the area where we had the most amount of news. That's where the biggest screech was. That's where the, you know, that was the loudest screaming shorts. That's where they trapped the most amount of people. And that's really kind of what happens. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Mark, it always comes back to one thing, price. And, yeah. and price right here, I think you'll see, you know, I, listen, I could be wrong. We might go much higher, but I think you'll see that price will settle in here, and you'll see lower prices short term with high, much higher prices out in the future. Let's take a look at the go outside the, the box, if you will, and then the outside factors. Uh, you watch all that around the world, literally, here. Uh, this this uh, European thing, uh, is that going to hang on, the ramifications of that vote for a while? Well, you know, actually, it's funny because I, I traded 36 hours straight last week at the end of the week into that from the morning all the way to the following Friday. and. Uh -huh. I, I think that really what you're going to see here is that that's not that big a deal. You know, the, the British pound itself, they never gave up control of their own currency. So they're, they're going to be fine. But I think what you're really going to see is a lot more fallout and other nations are going to say, hey, we want out too and we're going to have a referendum. So I think that's only one small cog in the big ugly economic wheel in what we're looking at because, again, GDP came out this morning 1% growth. Think about that. The Fed put in $4 trillion to create 1% growth and no jobs. So there's a lot of underlying problems here, which are going to create problems back down to the farms as well, but hopefully they'll solve themselves out. And of course, one thing we know for sure, if we're farming and we're producing, people got to eat and they're coming to us to get it. So we should be fine. I like that. A good way to start uh, to end our uh, conversation here in the grains. Todd, take a break and we'll come back. We'll talk about the livestock trade. One minute. Todd Horwitz back with us live from Chicago after this.